We are carrying right on with metabolism and going from the Krebs cycle right into the electron transport chain. And another name for the electron transport chain that you may see on the test and in your study materials is oxidative phosphorylation. And let's look at that name for just a second, oxidative phosphorylation. So we are using oxidation to phosphorylate something. So we're phosphorylating ADP or adding a phosphate to ADP to make ATP. And then just as a reminder, here is oil rig. This is probably that little memory aid you learned in chemistry. Oxidation is loss of electrons and reduction is gain of electrons. So remember those high energy intermediates from the Krebs cycle, NADH and FADH2. Oxidation will occur, and remember, oxidation is loss, so NADH is going to lose its electrons and donate to these electrons in the electron transport chain. So first thing we got to cover is the location. So it's going to happen in the mitochondria, but more specifically, you got to know that it's going to be the inner membrane. So it's going to occur in the mitochondria, and remember, the mitochondria has two membranes to it. It's got the outer membrane and the inner membrane. And so you have to know that the electron transport chain is going to happen on the inner membrane. And remember that the Krebs cycle occurs in the matrix or the cytosol of the mitochondria. Now let's look at how the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain fit together. So we've got the Krebs cycle happening in the mitochondrial matrix. We've got acetyl-CoA jumping in with oxaloacetate. And ultimately the end goal of the Krebs cycle is to create these high energy or high electron intermediates, NADH and FADH2. And then on the inner membrane, we have these enzymes called complex one, two, three, and four. And then we have some minor players like Q and cytochrome C which we'll get into later. And then the NADH and the FADH2 are donating their electrons, loss of electrons, and the electrons keep jumping through this chain of enzymes until they get to their final electron acceptor in the form of O2. That's a really important point that you for sure gotta know. And so once the electrons join with oxygen, they create water in the form of H2O. And remember that these electrons have a lot of energy, and so they cause the movement of hydrogen into this inner membrane space. And so what we have happening is H plus begins accumulating in high concentration over here and then it powers the ATP synthase enzyme. It runs through this turbine-like enzyme and it ends up allowing ATP synthase to phosphorylate ADP to create ATP. So that was just a review of the electron transport chain and now we're going to get into the good stuff. Now we're going to get into all that high yield info that you need to know for the test. So Everything from here on out is golden. They're all good, good nuggets that you have to know for the test. So the electron transport chain, as the name implies, it's all about electrons. And so the chain is made up of four electron carrying complexes, also called cytochromes. Their electron source is NADH and FADH2, and they result in the transfer of electrons in the form of H+. The H plus is moved across the inner membrane to the space between the inner and outer membrane. And then the final electron acceptor is gonna be oxygen. Okay, so let's talk about the enzymes in the electron transport chain and what you need to know about them. So there are four major complexes called complex one, two, three, and four. Complex one is called NADH dehydrogenase complex and the electron source is NADH. So NADH feeds its 